I think that there's so much mystery around his life. Obviously not all the stories are true. Many are, many aren't. But I think it's that mystique that kind of keeps that legend going. Jack Fazig, the nearly seven foot tall strongman and folk hero, was born in Lancaster on March 18th, 1894. By age 16, his size was already getting media attention with the Lancaster Intelligencer calling him a physical marvel. His family moved to New York around this time and it's here where Jack pursued boxing. All throughout the state, he became known as the Man Mountain. Jack grew to a maximum size of nearly seven feet tall and approximately 300 pounds of brawn and muscle, but was more of an entertaining showman than a disciplined fighter. Jack never really took boxing seriously. He kind of had a little bit of fun with it. Um, had he, would he have taken it seriously? He really would have been heavyweight champion. No question about that, just based on his size alone. Uh, the reality was though, he wasn't that fast and he did like to drink and he just liked to have fun and, and really never took the sport seriously. Yeah, eventually he made his way back to Lancaster and uh, he would be sort of the carnival strongman. As a matter of fact, he would challenge the uh, traveling strongman and he would always win. Many times the prize was like $100 cash or $50 cash and uh, he would always end up beating the carnival strongman. Fazig eventually moved to Mannheim and continued performing impressive physical feats. Several of the things he's known for is for his feats of strength. For example, when he lived in Mannheim, he would carry 100 pound bags of feed on his each shoulder for several miles. He actually lifted cars off the ground, took them out of ditches and so forth. It's here in Mannheim where a lot of tall tales were born. A very popular one is when the bridge west of Mannheim went out, Jack laid down and made a makeshift bridge with his back. A train full of people roared over Jack's back and never derailed. Jack got up and simply said, but gee, that tickled. Another popular tale is of a woman's car breaking down in East Petersburg. Legend says Jack helped this woman by pushing it the entire way back to Mannheim. While he was a local hero, he still had a good amount of people afraid of him. His size alone terrified the people of Mannheim. This, in addition to his drinking habits and exotic fighting dogs, really petrified a lot of locals. A lot of people in Lancaster County and in Mannheim perceived him as a loner or as sort of a hermit, if you will. He lived alone many times in shacks with uh, uh, training fighting dogs and fi fighting gamecocks. For many parents uh, would say to their kids, you better stay in line or we'll get Jack Fasig after you. Um, but honestly, he was looked at as a man with a big heart. The most surprising thing about Jack was that he might have had more brains than brawn. He graduated top of his class, was versed in fine arts and literature, and often could be seen strutting along Mannheim streets humming arias in very fashionable attire. Many times he would just, he would love to laugh, he would love to sing, he could recite the entire Gettysburg Dress by memory. We also know that he could speak Pennsylvania Dutch fluently. But what this big man with an even bigger heart was truly known for was helping the needy and being the muscle for Mannheim. Local plants and factories were quick to hire a man like him. When he worked at Armstrong Cork Factory in Lancaster, they said he could do the job of two or three men. There's one tale that uh, he dared somebody that he could lift himself up while standing in a bucket. So he got into the bucket, stood up, lifted the handle, and of course the bottom went right out of the uh, bucket. He spent his final years in a shack-like home north of Hazel Street and passed away at age 57 due to a heart attack. Jack Fasig's photo hangs proudly at the Cat's Meow in Mannheim. They even have a burger named in his honor. His physical strength and incredible feats are always up for debate, but the legacy of his kind character is set in stone. I think he's just one of the many legends of Lancaster County. I mean, uh, there's a lot of strange tales and a lot of fabricated tales about him, but honestly, he was a, just a gentle giant with a big heart.